Hello everyone, welcome to Writing Quest, and in today's episode, I've been doing a lot of outlining, been doing a lot of work on the book, and so I'm going to walk you through the first few chapters, the prologue, chapter one and maybe chapter two, and how I'm outlining it so that each and every chapter makes sense, as well as update you on the story. Huzzah! We're going to jump into the computer right away, and this is a Notion template, which if you've watched a lot of my other videos, you know that um, I like to use Notion for a lot of my outlining stuff, and I'll have more tutorials on a lot of that stuff coming up. Um, so we're going to just kind of explore this. This is a template that I want to make available sooner than later. I already have a template available. You can purchase that. Um, if you want to use, it's called a writer's simple template. So it's just a simple outliner for working through your stories. This version is a much more complex version, which is not fully ready, but I hope to make it ready for um, it to be available so you can use the same process I'm using. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to Of Wolves and Wizards. So I'm going to chapter outlines here. And I have two views here on the chapter outlines. So this is the three-act structure that I've worked through for this entire book. Now, it's not totally done. Um, I'm still kind of adjusting and changing things, but for the most part, it's ready to go. Now, down here, we have Of Wolves and Wizards and the chapter outline. So I have five or six different things that are a requirement for a chapter. This is based off of Abby Emmons' scene cards. Um, want to give credit where credit is due. I did not come up with this. Um, I'm using her method. And so I found it to be a really good framework for putting together not only your whole story, but then each individual chapter, because every single chapter needs to matter. And that's something that I, when I've written before, I'd finish a chapter and then you reread it. And it's like, who cares? This doesn't even matter to the story. It doesn't matter to the character. It doesn't matter to anybody. So that's what this is all about. So I've started outlining the first, this is the hook. So the first five chapters here are the hook from the hook to the inciting incident. And I haven't filled out quite everything yet, but I've worked through the first chapter here in the prologue and I wanna show you that. So we have the prologue, what it is, chapter, name. And then we have the goal of the scene. And this is just a brief overview. Think of it like the synopsis of a book. It's just a brief overview of this is the story that you want to tell and the goal you want to have. If you have something more specific, you can put that in this spot, like this character gives this character item, just as a reminder to remember to put that in the scene and that's part of the goal. Um, but for the most part, I keep it general. And then if I have those specific things, I put those in. So we have the goal of the scene. Then we have the setup. The setup is simply where we start the chapter and where the characters are in that moment. So it generally starts off with they have a problem, which is set up from the previous part of the story. So they have some problem they're trying to solve. And this is just kind of where they're at with that problem with the other characters in time and space. Then you have the tension. So the tension is kind of the resistance to the problem. So they have a problem, they're trying to solve it, but it's not working. Nothing's you know, the, it's the obstacles that are getting in their way. It's what is preventing them from solving the problem. And what are they trying to do to solve the problems to the problem? If that makes sense. That leads us into the crossroads. So eventually they're going to have a moment where they have to decide. They have to, they've been fighting the problem. They've been fighting the problem. And now they've got a moment where they've either got to go this way or they've either got to go this way. And that is a pivotal moment for the whole scene. Think of it as like the game changing midpoint, the part where, you know, everything in the scene changes and they have to make a decision one way or the other. That decision, when you come over here, needs to be based off of their internal conflict and their fear. So they decide based on the two options in front of them, they try to pick the path of least resistance, which needs to be the part the, that needs to basically be the wrong choice because if it's the wrong choice, then it sets up, it may, may not have to be the complete wrong choice, but it's certainly not the best choice. And so it sets up more of the story for later and um, gives them, you know, momentum going forward. 
So out of the decision, then you just have the outcome. So what happened? So after they had the problem, they couldn't solve it. They finally had to decide something. They decided something. Now it happens. What's the fallout of that whole thing? And then, of course, what is the new question that comes up? So in the context of our story, if you've been following along, we start the story with this prologue of the high people's downfall. And we have uh, multiple characters now. If you followed for a long time, you might know that Artemis was a side character that we kind of put aside, but I'm actually bringing him back in. And now Agorath is, so Artemis is actually going to take Agorath's spot in the story. I know that sounds big. And then, but Agorath is still going to have a place. So I'm just going to read through this prologue, kind of show you what I mean. The reason we do this is because I want to make sure that every character's internal conflict and motivation works as to why they are doing things now versus why they might set things up in the future. So the setup is Artemis stands over his father, Agnathane, who has just died. He holds in his hand the source of his father's power, his staff. His father, or he rolls his father's last words over to him over and over in his mind, unsure what to do. So this is the setup. So there's chaos around. If you've read the prologue already, um, I'm going to obviously be changing and editing it. But Artemis is standing there. He's just received this from his father, and he doesn't know what to do. His father's dead. There's chaos all around him. What does he do? Tension. Agorath and Gaian, Artemis' is two brothers. So we had two brothers. We now have three. It's just, you know, welcome to the writing process. Come into the room and force him to leave because there's chaos abounding, um, the citadel is falling apart, you know, it's a mess. They fight their way through the citadel. The three brothers are a perfect trifecta of power, decimating the wraith walkers all around them. When they reach the courtyard at the highest point, there is nowhere for them to run, and the wraith walkers soon threaten to overtake them. So that's the tension. They're trying to escape, they're trying to leave, and they can't. But they're dealing with their grief, so they're trying to figure that all out. Um, Artemis also has this new power that he doesn't know what to do anything with. And so he's working through that. So this is the crossroads. So they're at this point where they have to leave. They have to figure out what to do. They don't know what to do. I'm going to probably do some magic key, timey wimey stuff that makes this work. I'm not quite sure how it's going to happen yet. Um, but the darkness closes in and Artemis draws upon his father's staff. He's going to, there's going to be some way that he knows to do this because um, it's going to, that'll have to tie in later in different books and all that kind of stuff. As he touches every life he can in the city, attaching himself to the soul of each person he can find. Just as he is about to do the impossible and transport them to safety, Agorath is stabbed through the heart by the wraith walk, by a wraith walker, and Artemis is unable to touch his soul. Little typo there. Artemis is able, unable to touch his soul. So Agorath is going to die. And Artemis is, is going to not be able to reach him because the Wraith Walkers are pure chaos. So if he is killed by a Wraith Walker, he is not going to be able to reach him with the magic. <clears throat> okay. So there's the crossroads. So his brother is getting dragged away dead. He's got to leave. He's got to attach. He's attached himself to all these other people of the city. And so the decision out of out of time and out of options, Artemis watches as his brother is dragged into the abyss and he must act. He is forced to leave his brother behind. So he's making this decision to leave his brother for dead and disappear. Um, Agorath and or Artemis and Gaian and those left of the high people arrive in a pristine new world untouched by the chaos of their homeland. And then the new question is, where are they? I think this is a super strong prologue. It sets up a lot of grief for all the characters. It sets up a lot of expectation, but it also sets up some questions. Um, and some ways we can tie things back to the beginning. And then I'm going to go through this for each of these other chapters. And we're going to go through, you know, why do these things all matter and why do they happen? It's a lot of extra work. And if you've watched some of the other videos, I've been talking a lot about this whole outlining process. But ultimately, it's going to create a much stronger story because what, what I'm trying to do and what we should be trying to do when we write is we want the person reading to never be able to stop turning the page. They just want to keep flipping through. And so that is where um, this comes in because you can really make sure that every single moment and every single word matters. So that's where we're at with the story. I'm really excited and I'm feeling like we're finally getting a grasp on this whole story of what this book is about and where it's going to go. 
Um, my plan is through the month of January and into February, I'm gonna finish out the outline and then I'll be writing it by February to where we are cranking out words super fast so that we can get this book done. So thank you for watching Writing Quest. Please subscribe and like this video. It really helps out the channel. And we'll see you next time. Huzzah!